Welcome to another video. This question is a pretty simple question which you can actually solve by looking at it and try to plug in numbers and see what works. But the purpose of the video is to show you a strategy you could use for solving a system of equations where it is not as straightforward looking as it, it should be or as it is. Okay, let's get into the video. So as you can see, we have two variables and we have two equations. So what you might think of is um, maybe I should do a substitution from one equation into the other. The problem you're going to run into is that whatever you try to substitute in one equation, you can't just isolate one thing completely. For example, from this first equation, you're going to have some crazy stuff and your equation is going to become maybe a quartic or a quintic equation okay so what you want to do is see if you can do a substitution or you can rewrite the expression in a way that is easy for you to replace what you have so if you look keenly at this it's more as if it's a symmetric um, system of equations that is you can switch x and y and it doesn't change anything because you got x you got y you got x, y. If you change their positions, nothing changes, right? The same thing here. You got x squared, you have y squared. If you switch their positions, nothing changes. So, let's try and rewrite each of these equations in a way that makes it easy. What if we put these two together? We have x plus y plus x, y equals 11. Can we do any factoring for the second one? What's common to this and this? XY is common. So we might as well say XY factored out. What's going to be left is going to be X plus Y equals 30. Now what do you see? It, just, it still does not look way. Well, we can do this. Look. Now, so don't say, oh, I'm going to say, let me isolate x, y from here, and then it's going to be x plus, you're still going to have x and y together. So the strategy is to replace x, y and x plus y with something else. So we can say, let a be equal to x plus y, and let b be equal to x, y. So we're going to have a different set of equations. So now the first one becomes a plus b equals 11. And we have a, b equals, what's that? a times b will be, or b times a will be equal to 30. So we have a, b equals 30. The question is, can you solve this? <laughs> So the question you're going to ask yourself is, what two numbers, so this is what we do when we do factoring, what two numbers will you multiply to get 30, but when you add them together, you're going to get 11. It's 5 and 6. So that's the solution to this. So like I said, this is a pretty easy problem. You just have to realize that this is the way to go. So I know... Again, you can make a quadratic out of this and then factor, but this is already easy. This is what we do when we do factoring. So we know that, okay, just for the sake of those who would like me to solve a quadratic, I'm just going to do it. So from equation one, we know from here, A equals 11 minus B, right? So we can go here and say that 11 minus B times B equals 30. If you distribute this, you get 11b minus b squared equals 30. You make a quadratic out of this, you get b squared minus 11b um, plus 30 is equal to 0. So if you factor this, you get b minus 5, b minus 6 equals 30, equals 0. Come on, equals 0. Okay? And then you get b equals 5 and b equals 6 as your two solutions. 
So, we clearly know when b is equal to 5, go back here. When b equals 5, what would a be? a would be 6. And when b equals 6, a will be 5. So we know that solutions solution sets are, let's put it this way, a equals 5, b equals 6, or a equals 6, b equals 5. By the way, remember this is not what we're looking for. We're looking to find x and y combinations. So we go back to the original substitution we did when this is 5 and this is 6. So we're going to say that so we have x plus y equals 5 and xy equals 6. The same thing that happened here. Now in this case I'm not going to solve a quadratic. You already see that is just the whole factoring thing. What two numbers will you multiply to get 6? But when you add them, you get 5. Well, they are 2 and 3. So that means that x equals 2 and y equals 3, or you can switch it, x equals 3 and y equals 2. That's what you get from this. This implies x equals 2, y equals 3, or x equals 3, y equals 2. That's what you get from there. Now we go to the second case of when a, what is a again? a is the sum. So you have another system, x plus y equals 6 and xy equals 5. What do you get? What two numbers will you multiply to get 5? But when you add them, you get is yet 6. Well, it's 5 and 1. So we can say that x equals 5, y equals 1, or x equals 1, y equals 5. So in total we have four sets of solutions. So this would have given us a quartic if we're trying to do some weird substitution. But this is a better and easier path to follow. You don't even have to solve this. You just need to look at this and tell yourself what A and B would be the same way we're doing this. So therefore solution sets are 2, 3, 2, comma, 3, 3, comma, 2, 5, comma, 1, and 1, comma, 5. All of these. Nice. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.